Dan Howard and I were discussing this last week. Uh, you know, under which circumstances would you pair max effort lifting days and aerobic capacity work? I would, I, I, if you needed to do it, I would separate it at least six hours six before hours. or after. Yeah, I can see yeah. that. I mean, uh, uh, my answer to that was, depending on like how smashed the athlete is after the max effort session, might be a good idea perhaps to put them into some kind of uh, aerobic capacity session just as something restorative to try and down regulate a little bit and try and get them feeling normal again but um, mm -hmm. you know that that would be that would be a pretty extreme set of circumstances I think that if you did it in the means of their own skills practice I think that that would be beneficial especially when you're talking about from a technical standpoint right right, right. so is, shadowing or something like that yeah and they're probably going to do that anyways yeah you know most likely most of my guys i see them down the other side of the gym shadow boxing or doing something crazy over there anyways most of the time i'm yelling at them to not do that but you know at the most part these guys want to train they want to train as much as they possibly can now with that being said as long as it's not physically taxing them and they're like pushing the envelope on their aerobic work or you know something along the lines of that then yeah it's okay i, I don't see, i mean you're not going to get the maximum benefit of the overall strength absolute strength adaptations that we're trying to acquire you know um but it's it's a small percentage you know in my opinion you still can do it they do it anyways in a fight yeah you just people just don't understand that you yeah. know what i mean so it's at the end of the day if they if it's going to benefit them from a psychological standpoint it's going to, to decay fatigue go ahead you know i prefer you know either ice bath or massage or just kind of diaphragmatic breathing legs up something like that or just going eating some quality food mm. getting your, you know getting your carbs getting your proteins and going and laying down and try to take a nap because they got to train the next couple of hours anyways, you know, so, but it's, it, it's, it could it's work. A, it's a good point, you know, like go eat some good fucking food. Let food be the yeah. medicine, you know what I mean? Like I, yeah. I, I, I imagine, I imagine at the top levels with your guys going through some really serious weight cuts, you'd have some mm -hmm. really questionable practices, people, you know, undernourished and still trying to recover from hard sessions. And it's like, for fuck's sake, let's eat some good food, get some actual nutrition in, and the recovery will, yeah. will be enhanced so much more. Yeah, like right, out, right after our session, after we do our cool down and they do their, their breathing, the, the next thing I say is go eat and go sleep. Yeah. Go eat, and this, especially if they're like late at night, like I get done with Junior Dos Santos around eight o'clock. I'm like, all right, bro, go home, go to sleep. You know, get some food and go to sleep. It's like, okay, coach, you know, but he wants to stick around. He wants to hang out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, bro, go home. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's time for you to rest and recover, you know, but it, it, you got to remember it's like a family. Yeah, so like yeah. they're all here, they're, you know, they're kicking it with their friends and, you know, they just finished a hard workout. So it's hard for them to just be like, okay, don't, don't, don't go, you know, this, this, and this, you know what I'm saying? So right. at the end of the day, as long as they have some adequate nutrition put in, and I'm not saying that they have to scarf down food right after they're done they're not bodybuilders and, Honestly, that's not really beneficial anyways from, from a science perspective. Mm. Uh, but you still want to go home. You want to bring down cortisol. You want to start to wind down, especially at nighttime, because if you're in light and you're playing with your phone or you know, you're in a lighted room, it's going to be hard for you to calm down and, and to reduce serotonin and, and try to bring your body back down so you can go to sleep. Mm. So you want to get in that dark room and you want to shut off all those lights after you're done with your last meal and, sh and at least be at least an hour or two before you go to sleep, shut everything down. Yeah. And that'll be the best way to recover. You know, yeah. sleep and nutrition, sleep and nutrition are, are the best ways to recover, bar none. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can do all these other things, but at the end of the day, it really just, it comes down to that, that you know, that whole thing of eating right and sleeping right. Yeah, that's that's good, man. I'm glad we got around to that uh, when it comes to recovery. But hey, why don't we take one more question and then start to wrap this thing mm. up today, brother? Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. This is a good one for you. 
since you've been in the game just as long as I have. Okay. Well, let me get it back. Okay. Three lessons that you would pass down to the up and coming fitness trainer, either personal trainer or strength coach. All right. Okay. Lesson number one people are strange. They're all different and they're strange. Don't expect people to see things the way you do. You need to be as adaptable as you can to someone else's circumstances, someone else's values, someone else's worldview. Um, be adaptable because people are strange. There's lesson one. Mm -hmm. Lesson two, um, don't ever fucking steal someone else's ideas, you know? <laughs> you know? we're all standing on the shoulders of giants to quote Luke Lehman who's a good friend of mine and uh, you know like pay homage you know acknowledge those who you've learnt from and uh, and everyone's happy then you, you you're never gonna be worried about being expo exposed as a fraud or anything like that yeah just yeah. just just acknowledge acknowledge where you got stuff from and I'd, oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. And I'd say the third thing is never stop investiga investing in your education. Never stop learning. Um, yeah. Because you'll see a lot of, um, I don't know if it's an age thing or an old school thing, but you'll see a lot of coaches when they get to a certain point in the, their career, it's almost like they switch off and they go, mm -hmm. they go into autopilot. They're kind of sleepwalking. You know what I mean? There's mm -hmm. no passion there probably because there's nothing new, stimulating new ideas and growth and, you know, different ways of doing things. So I would say be, be always investing in education and never stop learning.